Our next speaker is Dr. John Carson from North Carolina State. Thank you. I'm glad to be here this afternoon. And I want to talk to you about a membrane project that we worked on. Very, the, the membrane itself is uh, similar to the, the process that uh, Venati talked about earlier. We did a um, pilot scale demonstration of this. The results were actually talked about, um, were discussed in a poster, so I'm not going to go into the detailed results. My um, topic today is where does that recovery technology and others fit into the um, overall conservation, which is the, the focus of NRCS, EPA, and, and this conference. So, um, you know this, manure has resources, and many of those farms, most of them not around here, um, can use those resources well. We don't have to do anything else. The folks in, in Illinois and Iowa, they don't have a manure problem, they don't have a nutrient problem. They may have an odor problem, depending on where they are, but, but um, not for the resources. But the fact is, each operation is different. And um, I was talking to, to you in, in Missouri, and some others in, in North Dakota, um, Idaho, Producers have different needs, and they have different, um, therefore, different problems, even related to the same, uh, even if it's the same industry and the same species. Yesterday, we talked about North Carolina, and, and this is generally in the southeast. Our farms have uh, insufficient cropland to really use the nitrogen we have. Now, that does not mean we're over applying nitrogen to the land because we use these big lagoons, we have shallow. Um, groundwater and so shallow lagoons and therefore wide um, surface area and a lot of volatilization. And so the, the, the project was to demonstrate um, this membrane in a, a pilot scale system and this is a, a quick diagram of the system and as I said this is not the focus of, of that. I will tell you this, point out this, that the, the recovery <coughs> Settled wastewater, it, it, it's, I'm not going to really call it solid separation, um, but it's fresh is, is the key. And the recovery was poor in this membrane. And the reason is because, I, I don't show it here, but the influent ammonia fraction of the TKN whoops, was very small. Whereas a digester effluent, um, the ammonia fraction would be very large and we got good recovery. That's the kind of information a resource manager needs to know about how to apply a technology, right? And we've talked about um, a lot of these technologies today. Ed, you did a great job of, of filling in all of those. So everything he said and everything else you've heard um, this week, they all have um, different places, they have different goals, they have, used, uh, have, have different approaches. Um, <coughs> The question that I want to bring today is, is how do we put them all together? A big thing to, to remember though is that all of these get their product or the recovery or in some cases, uh, somebody mentioned nitrification, denitrification, the destruction, but they all have a byproduct also. Animal production has a byproduct and that's what we're talking about. Solid separation has a byproduct. Phosphate precipitation has a byproduct. All of these will have have other steps that you have to take care of, okay? So how do we put all of these into a gather, in, together to make a system, and not just a system for a farm, but a system for an entire industry? The system has to work. It doesn't have to be the same system, but we have to figure out how to measure that success in our entire country, and our entire food system. All right, we've seen this. And uh, a graduate student was nice enough to put this together, so I swiped it from her. You'll see that later this afternoon. Um, we've all seen this about um, sustainability, and we've been talking about environmental performance and a lot about economic sustainability and how we measure that. And um, somebody said there were two econo economists in the room the other day, and that was that was enough, but. But in, in many cases, we talk about the, the, the cost. Ed just finished um, his talk with that. 
And, and the economics seem to drive many of those decisions, and they have to. These, the producers have to stay in business, and, and, and the consultants have to stay in business, and the people that are selling the materials have to stay in business, and they're all in the room today. Um, but most of the analyses that we talk about on how to measure that don't include all the benefits. We talk about the value of the nitrogen that we get or the phosphate that we get, and it's different in different markets, and, and, and Ed showed us that. But what is, what is the value of environmental sustainability? How do we measure these ecosystem services? Some of them are easier to measure, the, the food value, the fuel, but some of these are not. Which ones do we value, and how do we quantify those values? These, these, these are questions that an engineer, it, it, uh, that this, especially this one at least, is, I'm not going to try and answer that directly, okay, so if you're waiting for the bottom line, um, we're not going to get there. What avoided costs do we include? Can we measure, can we pre predict what it would cost to clean up an estuary or, or just a, um, a, a, a stream reach of excess phosphate and then put that on the cost? Is that the value of not putting that phosphorus in the water? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to do this, but I think this is, this is, these are questions that we have to ask, and we need, I need at least a lot of other people to help me answer those questions, and people with different disciplines, and, and, and people that are a lot smarter than I am. Social sustainability is part of that, those, those, uh, that, that three-legged stool that we talk about. What are the social costs? What are the social benefits? Um, here are some of them. And I want to point out um, many of these, these especially, especially for an engineer, are extremely difficult um, even to talk about and even to come up with. I needed help even to come up with this list. I didn't come up with the list. But one thing that we um, have not talked about much unless it's private conversations, is the, the, the contractor and uh, integrator. That relationship and what does that mean to a community? Now, I'm not saying by any means that integrators are, or the integration system, the vertical integration system is bad. It's, it, it, it has produced a lot of food and a lot of jobs, but that relationship has been questioned. There, there are good parts of that relationship and bad. That's part of the social fabric of this. And um, we have talked about the, 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 the fact that the, our products are commodities. And that very concept means that, that we don't get what it even costs to produce our, our products sometimes. I don't know how to address that on a social level, but, but at least I'm suggesting that we, we find ways to talk about it. Um, talk about what they are, what we should do, and then how to measure those. And, and then my point is that those values should be included in these overall assessments. Okay? Now, I want to get back to um, something a little more comfortable, um, other technical performance issues, okay? What are some of the <coughs> barriers to adoption um, that I've seen um, in years of doing this and in, in talking today, listening today to people this week. The biggest thing, the biggest thing is water in the wrong place at the wrong time, right? Whether it's in, in, in now, manure it, it itself, fresh slurry manure, if you're going to separate that, some separators do a very good job on that, but that's not added water. Maybe we ought to just take North Carolina out of the animal business and stop adding water in the first place. But you have installed concrete that you, in, in buildings that you can't afford to change. Okay, so we have to go from where we are. We can't start over. Um, but almost every, every talk, everybody I've talked to 
whether it's up front or at the end of a product of, of the phosphate uh, recovery, whether it's struvite or something else, water in the wrong place is, is, is a big deal. And so um, I'm trying to work on that. A lot of people are trying to work on that, and, and I'd like some, some help to do that. Um, leaning off of some other things I said, another barrier to adoption is, is not having the right people in the room. The first session that EPA had had a lot to do with, with exactly this. They, they've had success, and, and, and I think Kelly is still around. She will explain this a little better than I can. Um, they put together a, a variety of people, stakeholders from the uh, Chesapeake Bay region, and they spent a lot of time on figuring out who that would be, who that should be, and getting them to buy into the process before they ever started. And somehow I think we need to, to include that. I'm sorry. The dietitians here that I'm talking about are, are not to keep my weight down, it's dietitians for the animals, and I guess that's not the right term. Um, nutritionists, thank you. Uh, honestly, I was putting this together close to when, when they needed that, and I had to go with what I had. Okay, that's the, the concept is there. But also, the, also another big point is that throughout all of this, I don't know if this is an exhaustive list. I probably, it's probably not. Who else should we have here? Who else should we be talking to? And, and the big one, whether this, this maybe ought to be in the front or, or at the top or in, in bold, investors. Now we have some of those here in terms of, of companies. Um, I'd like, and we have some uh, federal agencies represented here. And, and, and I mean, that's where some of that investment has to come in, in research and development and, and the co concepts that go forward. And so um, I'm, not, I'm really not being self-serving, but we do need more research dollars in spite of this being a, uh, an applied conference. All right, so uh, that'll work then. All right, so I'm going to cut this. Short, I, I do want to hope I have some time for questions because really that's what I want to start with is a, is a conversation. Um, how do we integrate the performance of multiple technologies together and manage all those different byproducts and, and side streams? How do we quantify the value of those improved ecosystem services or degraded ecosystem services? And uh, how do we include the right people um, at the right time at the right table? So those, I, I, I do want y'all to answer those questions. I don't have the answers, but I hope you do. <laughs> all right, well, any comments at all? Um, hold, your, hold your tomatoes up. It's a risk. I, as, uh, I work for NC State University, and there's a lot of folks. The, the first conversation is a non-disclosure agreement, <laughs> um, and, and and I understand that. But but yeah, it'd be great if we could if we could do that or sign multiple non-disclosures and, and at least get start to get get people in the same room. Yes, ma'am. Our resources are limited, 
So we just manage like the, the whatever we have at hand and try to justify can I afford like three more samples? Right. Or we uh, sometimes that the, like um, that the it will be very nice that the, there is some help from NRCSI that like, we can do this analysis together because you have the, the capability to analyze uh, uh, advice what kind of parameters is actually needed. Right. So that right. we don't waste. Right. Many many times we start with it idea of what a technology is supposed to do when we, we set up a budget based on, on those samples and then we realize, well, something else is going on. And then you start into the investigation. And boy, does that get expensive. Well, it might be this, and so we take these samples and do this analysis. Well, that didn't work. We have to try something else. That gets really expensive. Yes, sir? Uh, I think I, I probably decided I, I, I see it being the responsibility of NCSU to have the stuff. And correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm not confident here, but I think NCSU really came up with the Lagoon Spray Field system to begin with, or did a lot of work in establishing the basic mass balance and understanding and how how you can irrigate on the forage crops and things to balance things out. And I see, um, as well as that, um, by made up for being responsible for getting the Smithfield Agreement by project managing that where NCSU probably knows the most as an institution about what's around. And I, 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 I see you guys as being able to integrate a lot of information. We've got technology developers talking to you every day about what they're doing and, and people like some, sometimes, I, I feel like technology developers, you say, hey, we've got a good idea and someone else has got a good idea that maybe Mm -hmm. that, that's right, and in fact, I've had a few of those conversations this week with, so with different trust, folks. Business people trust you guys. Yeah, and farmers uh, to, to business. The farmers that. trust Mark. <laughs> the farmers trust Mark Rice. They, <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be my that would be my sort of contribution to how do we trust the farmers to try and get a new system that integrates all these solutions. In. To, to some... I'm trying to pass the buck. Yeah. Uh, that's all I'm trying to do. Well, if the money comes with the buck, that's... Yeah. Um, to, to, to... Nobody, I think, has, has put it this way, but the purpose of the Animal and Poultry Waste Management Center a while back was in a way to do that because it was having all those in the same group they had that non-disclosure, or at least an internal agreement, and they could work together. Kind of didn't quite work out that way, but um, I don't think it's a, a secret that we're trying to work on on a revitalized center. I'm not sure it's going to happen, but it's not a secret that we're trying. Thank you. Yes, Keith, I'm sorry, you did. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you were, at the beginning, you were posing the question, how, the, how do you monetize the valorize, get some sort of in, insight on how the societal or the non sort of uh, easily quantifiable benefits can get worked into a, get taken account into a solution, into a decision on technology or environment. I, um, the thing that popped into my head was the one instance where I know that that happened was the early adopters uh, of digesters in the dairy industry back in like in the 1990s and 2000s before they came up with taking <coughs> lots of uh, extraneous inputs to boost their gas production and so forth. My understanding, at least in the Pacific Northwest, was that most of the digesters up to about 2005, 2010 that were done by uh, dairy people were done to reduce odor. And it wasn't for their own comfort, but it was a community. Uh, it was to live better with their community. Mm -hmm. um, and so, if you look into, if you wanted to see how that uh, valorization of a societal benefit gets taken into account, I mean, those those somehow they that somehow they did that example. Somehow they did that. And, and, and in fact, lagoons, uh, you mentioned early adoption of lagoons, and lagoons are a big problem today for the, the ammonia volatilization and the flood threat and, and failure. 
but they did reduce odor, and that's 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 part of what, that's why they they were developed. Yes, sir. I think though, if you're a person that develops best management practices, the <coughs> stuff that's being sold to farmers, you got to be real careful about coming up with a value for improved ecosystem services or whatever. This is something the farmers are buying. I don't, I don't use any, I don't no. try to put any value on reducing ammonia emissions, reducing phosphorus runoff, any of that stuff. I keep it to dollars and cents that's going to that farm. And, and I think that's very important it, not it, to try to get out of that box. For the, for the producer, absolutely. The, the, the producer should absolutely not be paying that cost. We should be paying that cost, the rest of society. That's my point. The producer has to, has, has only got to work on the dollars and cents. But if we had a, a societal value to those things, they would be added to what that producer is, is um, getting, not paying, but what he's getting, or a, a societal um, uh, uh, contribution to the cost of that to, to the producer. So I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely agreeing with you. The, the other part of this is that we have to, these, all these different disciplines have to work together and we have to learn how to talk to each other in, in interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary ways. Yes? Um, kind of along those same lines, I think one of the stakeholders that we still need to get is the general public. We need to really educate them. I don't know what goes on in the whole society. I think that's really helped a lot to see the idea of what these other benefits might be if we had the information. That's true. Thank you. All right, let's thank you, John, for a very interesting talk.